guys! In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing for you all Altruist uh, Anti Redness and Pigmentation Tinted Sunscreen SPF 50. I'm pretty excited to chit chat with you all about this. I've gotten many requests to review this product, and I'm really excited to see that they came out with, with something new this year, and I think it will be helpful to, to many of you. What is this sunscreen? It is a chemical sunscreen that has so many wonderful filters in it for protecting the skin against the wavelengths of ultraviolet radiation that burn the skin, UVB, as well as those wavelengths of ultraviolet radiation that age the skin and contribute to hyperpigmentation, discoloration, and irritation, UVA. Both UVB and UVA are going to also contribute to skin cancer formation. What does this have in it to protect you against all of that? It has avabenzone in it, which is a chemical filter that will block UVA1 and UVA2. It also has ethyl hexyl salicylate, or also goes by the name octisalate. It has octocrylin. Both octisalate and octocrylin will block UVB. And then it has bimotrizinol in it, which has a long chemical name, bis ethyl hexyl oxyphenol methoxyphenyl triazine. Bimotrizinol will block UVB and UVA1 and UVA2. And then it has tinosorb A2B, which goes by the name tris biphenyl triazine nano. Tinosorb A2B will block UVA and UVB. And lastly, it has ethyl hexyl triazone or uvenol T150, uh, UVB blocking filter. So that's great. You know, these are filters that uh, many of which we don't have here in the States. All we have here in the States to block us from that aging UVA ray is avabenzone. And unfortunately, avabenzone is not uh, very stable. We lose UVA protection from avabenzone uh, after we apply the sunscreen with time. Uh, and this product, however, while it has avabenzone, the nice thing is that it's got a other filters that will block those damaging UVA rays, but many of these other filters actually help stabilize avabenzone. So you get really good protection against those damaging aging rays, much uh, beyond what you would get from a chemical only sunscreen that you buy here in the States. In addition to these chemical filters, this product also has titanium dioxide in it, which will block UVB and UVA. Now here in the States, we, the FDA does not allow the addition of titanium dioxide or zinc oxide to sunscreens that have avabenzone in, in them based on theoretical lab studies a long time ago that suggested that these ingredients might accelerate the rate of degradation of avabenzone. But honestly, that hasn't really parsed out to be true, but that's why you will not find a sunscreen here in the States that has both avabenzone as well as mineral actives. But this one, you know, is sold in the UK. This is a UK brand, by the way, I forgot to mention. So yeah, really phenomenal filters. And the reason these filters are also important is not only do they protect against aging and sunburn and risk of skin cancer, but for those of you who have conditions of hyperpigmentation, these filters are really important to you because they're going to block those wavelengths of ultraviolet radiation that contribute to persistent hyperpigmentation beyond what you would just get from, from a sunscreen here that was offering inadequate UVA protection is what I'm getting at. Because the sunscreen has titanium dioxide in it, if it weren't tinted, it would probably leave a little bit of a cast. Their non-tinted sunscreens do live, leave a little bit of a white, shiny flashback type cast, um, but uh, this product is tinted. The reason the tint, though, is good is not only for camouflaging the flashback from the titanium dioxide, but the tint comes from iron oxides. Iron oxides can actually protect against wavelengths of visible light. Now this is not the same as ultraviolet radiation. It's visible light that we see with our eyes. And we know that visible light in the blue range can actually contribute further to persistent hyperpigmentation, particularly in darker skin types. Um, and you may be wondering, hey, I don't see iron oxides listed. They are CL77499 and CL77491. Those are those are another name for iron oxides. In other words, this sunscreen really provides excellent protection against all wavelengths of ultraviolet radiation that can harm your skin, as well as wavelengths of visible light that can contribute to hyperpigmentation. So it's a great sunscreen at baseline. It also has some botanic extracts that are added that are intended to be helpful for redness. What are these? Uh, butcher's broom root extract and uh, horse chestnut. Now these are botanic extracts that actually have been shown to be helpful for uh, what's called chronic venous insufficiency. Uh, 
and that's a condition in which your veins don't really transport your blood back up to your heart as efficiently and it kind of pools and leads to swelling. Um, and those ingredients actually have been shown to help the veins contract better and improve uh, overall return of blood to the heart. And that might actually be helpful for redness and hyperpigmentation, specifically melasma. There's a vascular component to melasma. And so using botanic extracts like this might help that. In addition to those two ingredients, it also has um, Centella asiatica, an ingredient that is anti-inflammatory and has been shown to facilitate wound healing. So that has a very soothing effect. It has licorice root extract, a botanic ingredient that is known to be helpful in calming down redness. It's also anti-inflammatory, so if you have irritable skin, this can help in calming that down. And then lastly, it has calendula or chamomile extract, which too has been shown to be anti-inflammatory. Now these five botanic extracts, while they are, we do have studies showing that they're anti-inflammatory and can be helpful for redness, they do add an element of increased risk to this product and that they are ingredients that you might develop an irritation to. They add an element of additional risk to this product beyond they're beyond the altruist other sunscreens which don't have these ingredients in them. And then lastly, outside of these five botanics, it also has hydrolyzed yeast extract in it. Hydrolyzed yeast contains something called beta-glucans, which are compounds that are not only antioxidants that can help calm down inflammation and redness, but also deliver wonderful hydration to the skin and are soothing to the skin. You'll find hydrolyzed yeast also is added sometimes to hair care products to uh, help with frizz. It's kind of an anti-static agent. So it's not uncommon to see that there and it definitely can soothe the skin. And lastly, it has panthenol in it, a pro B vitamin that your skin can take up and convert to its active form. And that is also soothing to the skin and helpful for skin barrier recovery. All right, we chatted about all of the ingredients. Unfortunately, this sunscreen is not water resistant. That is one issue with it. Now, I told you all these great things about it. I have to tell you the truth though about this product. The pigment is really dark and really dark and almost coppery. And so if you have a fair skin type, I would say you're not gonna be happy with this. I don't consider myself fair, although I know many people on the internet say I'm ghostly white, but actually in real life, I have a slightly olive to fair tone. And so this product is way too coppery dark on my skin. It also uh, stays on your hand, stains your hands and transfers to your clothing pretty easily. So be aware of that. The other thing about this is that it's also got some green pigments in it, which help to camouflage redness. So when you put it on the skin, it's kind of odd. The green at first is the most noticeable as you're putting it on. And then as it starts blending into your skin, the other pigments come out and overtake that, overshadow that green. And so that's when you get more of a coppery orange brown color. While it's formulated as anti-redness, I really think the strength in this product is for people who have darker skin types that cope with hyperpigmentation because you're really going to get good protection uh, against uh, pro-pigmenting wavelengths of visible light that contribute to that. But also a lot of people with darker skin types don't realize that some of their hyperpigmentation is actually redness. Redness kind of looks on darker skin types, erythema is the medical term for redness. It actually looks more like brown, purpley brown discoloration. It's a very subtle uh, pickup. And I, you know, as a dermatologist, I'm trained and I have a very keen eye for distinguishing uh, redness versus true hyperpigmentation on darker skin types but it's not obvious is what I'm getting at. So you may actually have some what's called erythema or redness that's contributing to overall skin discoloration, in which case this product is really gonna protect you well. I think if you've got a darker skin type, this might actually go over well on your skin. But if you have really pale skin with a lot of redness, like redness due to rosacea or redness due to healing acne, while this is gonna be great for those conditions, the appearance of it is not gonna go over well with you guys. Um, so I'm warning you about that. 
This sunscreen is not tested on animals. And importantly, what I didn't mention at the beginning, but I really love about this brand is that a portion of the proceeds go to a phenomenal charity called Under the Same Sun that supports individuals with uh, albinism in Africa. This is a marginalized group and also is at high, high risk for very dangerous skin cancers. And so this company actually donates sunscreen to those individuals to help them protect their skin. And so I love this company and I really recommend supporting them. Uh, you know, if you have a darker skin type, I would say give this a whirl, but if you have a fairer skin type, be aware of that you're going to find maybe it's not the right color for you. But the formulation of their sunscreens overall in terms of active ingredients that actually work and help you, they really nail it. And so I love, I love this brand overall, and I just don't think that this particular product is going to work for many people, just as far as the aesthetics. Give their non-tinted sunscreens a try though, they are also great. They don't, they're not tinted and you will get a little bit of a white flash from them, but I think the color scheme goes over more universally. Even if you have darker, a darker skin type, I think the light, the slight cast from their non-tinted one is probably more acceptable than this kind of coppery coloration that you get from this. Also, this particular new tinted product has an, an added layer of risk with those botanic ingredients. And so, in other words, I, I still favor their non-tinted sunscreens, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily repurchase this for my own personal use. You can buy this on Amazon UK. I'll list it down below. It's pretty affordable. Their sunscreens are really inexpensive. And like I said, a portion of the proceeds goes to a great cause, and I really, I really love this brand. It's also actually designed, truthfully, by dermatologists. And so really conscientious ingredient choice and a really great company overall. So yeah, comment below and if you've used this, what your experience with it was, how you liked it, I'd love to know. But if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.